After a two-month summer break, the Powerboat P1 teams have headed to the Iberian Peninsula for the final two Grand Prix of the year, which will decide the 2008 Powerboat P1 World Championships. Portimao in Portugal in two weeks' time, and this weekend, the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea from Spain. Of course, when most people think of the Spanish seaside, they think of the cost of this or the cost of that down on the Mediterranean Sea. But Vigo is Spain's gateway to the Atlantic Ocean, right up in the northwest of the country, and it's surrounded by spectacular coves and sandy beaches. Situated in the estuary of the Ria de Vigo, it's the natural site for a harbour. And Vigo has grown to be the largest fishing port in Europe, as well as one of Spain's leading industrial regions. With the Peugeot Citroën plant nearby, building over half a million cars a year, of which 80% are exported around the world. But right now, all eyes in Vigo are turned towards the glamour and spectacle that's just arrived in town. I don't mean the Queen Mary 2. Cruise liners are one thing, but 100 mile an hour plus powerboats are quite another. Chris Shaw brings us up to date with how the championship contenders stand. It's turned out to be a thrilling championship chase this year in the Evolution class. They've been collisions, missed turns, breakdowns, and plenty of other dramas. Honeyparty.com and Lucas Oil have both been highly competitive, but have just had too many problems getting to the finish line. Pignolo 53 have had mixed fortunes too, including literally flying in Malta. GFN Gibalato have been pushing hard and finally got their first win of the year in Tunisia. They still have a shot at the title. Keaton Out and Limits have been on a learning curve with the new boat and getting the best from it. But the highlight so far has been two wins in Malta. Fountain Worldwide first for boats won the first four races of the year before luck turned against them. But despite a few problems, they've only had one non-point score. A protest against them from the first round has recently been overturned and they're now sitting on a good points haul. UIM uh, went through it, uh, gave us our points back, we're really happy and now we're, we're back to where we should be. Um, we've got a 220 point lead, it's, uh, it's a big lead but it's still something that uh, we've got to take care of uh, this weekend. And 640 points is a good score, but it isn't enough yet for Fountain Worldwide to seal the championship, but they just could do that in Spain. Supersport has seen some new challenges to the championship title, but being able to mount a strong and consistent challenge has eluded many. Saho have had the speed many times, but mechanical problems have let them down. And it's been the same woes for Silverline Bootsy Bullet, who really should have had more podiums. Bayer High Performance have been improving steadily with some good point scores, but a bad round in Tunisia set them back. Microlink PC have raced very hard all season, taking one win, and have been on the podium at every event, but their races at times have been highly dramatic. But again, no one has been able to match the dominance of Konum Yachts. There's only one race that they haven't won this year, spoiling a perfect run. The others have been closing the gaps in the races, but as long as Conan keeps scoring points, they really can't miss out on that second successive title. For Supersports contenders, Vigo sees the arrival of yet another new manufacturer keen to show off their products in the ever-growing world of Powerboat P1. Chris Shaw has the story. Listed as a wildcard entry for the next two rounds of Team Conrad. This is a brand new project and one that's come from being inspired by a Powerboat P1 race last year. 12 months ago there was nothing. There was no boat, there was no truck, there was not even a team. But uh, I'd been to a P1 race at, uh, at Cowes and uh, was absolutely hooked on the whole event. 
After a wild ride in Tunisia, throttle man Andreas Hakiopoulos has had to step out of the Phoenix 8 boat to help mend an injured back, which has given the opportunity for fast lady Sarah Donahue to step on board alongside the ever-enthusiastic Chinaman Martin Lai. Sarah Donahue is not a new face at all in the Super Sport class and has been navigated in the big Sergio. But a chance to join Phoenix TV is a big step up as she'll be driving. Here it's great because I'm in a driving position, which is what I do. And me and Martin work really well together as a team. We've already um, found that out with the short period of time we've spent on the water. Um, and it's nice that the boat goes a little bit faster as well. That's more, more my cup of tea. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. When it came to the Super Sports power pole, it was the championship leaders, Konam Yachts, who were fastest yet again. The big surprise was that second fastest were the new boys, Team Conrad. Unfortunately, being new boys, they've got to start their first race 20 seconds behind the pack. A pack which is right now heading out towards the start line, so we must join our race commentator, Martin Sanborn. Thank you, Tip, and let's take a look at the race course for the Grand Prix of the Sea Sprint Race here in Vigo. It is a 5.67 mile lap. They're gonna do eight laps plus the start lap. Clockwise rotation, seven turns. As we go on board, Michael Link and Conham, as they get all lined up as they did based on their power pole positions. And we have a green flag and the boats are underway. Off to an early jump is by a high performance. What a great start they got. On board Baya High Performance. So right now we've got Baya High Performance, followed by Microlink PC and then Conum Yachts. And Conum Yachts is now challenging Microlink PC, Voom Voom Hustler. They're on the inside, closing in on the rooster tail of Baya High Performance. Baya has found some speed today, and Conum Yachts looks like they're driving by Microlink PC. They've got a little bit of boat speed. This boat is always so fast, and they are in contention to wrap up the championship here in the first race in the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. Conum Yachts being chased now by the big Sergio as they make their way around the turn. Going way wide to the outside is Microlink PC, but still continuing to lead is by a high performance. Conum Yachts getting a little bumpy as they lost a little bit of ground to Microlink PC. Let's take a look at our virtual spectators. We see by a high performance drive away from Microlink PC at the start. They definitely got a great jump. As we circle back around, we see Conum Yachts running in second place side by side with Voom Voom Hustler Microlink as they all make their way towards the first turn. Back on board by a high performance, well out in the lead right now. Definitely have this boat dialed in. By a high performance, a Donzi, 39 foot Donzi. Second place right now is Microlink PC, followed by Conum Yachts. But look at the battle right now between Spirit of Port Tommaso and Tulio Abate. Conum Yachts moving up on Voom Voom Hustler. Microlink PC, oh, Voom Voom Hustler has a problem. They pull off the race course. Voom Voom Hustler running so strong as we look at our leader by a high performance. Well out in the lead right now. Second place now is Conum Yachts. Let's take a look and see what happened. As Microlink PC Voom Voom Hustler. He puts up his hand. He's getting ready to pull off the race course. They've got a problem. And now in third place, the big Sergio. This is the best position they've had all year in the Powerboat P1 Super Sport Series. Running fantastically now in third place. On board and over the top of Conum Yachts in their beautiful Chagrin. This boat has proven to be unbeatable all year long, but currently they're running in second place. Well, I'm with a very disappointed V Ganjavian who is sort of one blade short on his propeller. V, how do these things happen? Uh, I think it's just fatigue. Um, I don't know what it is. This is the third one now uh, this season. 
How much is each of these props to buy? Don't really want to know. <laughs> um, I think they're about um, four and a half thousand dollars each. Well, that explains what happened to Microlink PC, and here we have the battle shaping up right now with Redline Conrad challenging Spirit of Port Tommaso to move into fourth position. This boat is a very fast boat. Remember, they had to start 20 seconds behind because technically they're a rookie team. They're running as a wild card, but expect to see big things out of them next year. Back with Big Sergio currently running in third position. And now we have a three-ray battle with Tulio Abate, Conrad Redline, and Spirit of Port Tommaso. This time Conrad has moved to the outside, trying to get up alongside Tulio Abate. Spirit of Port Tommaso right between the two of them. Conrad Redline getting ahead of Tulio Abate. This is a 39-foot velocity. Probably one of the fastest conventional V-bottoms out there and look forward to big things from that boat next year. And here we have a problem with Phoenix ATV getting towed in. Their day is done. Back to our battle right now with Conrad and Tulio Abate. Look at these two boats side by side. These are both of the wild card entries here in the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. Second and third fastest boats in the power pole. The brand new team from the UK, Conrad Propulsion Systems, Redline Racing. As we go back on board, Conum Yachts. Oh, it looks like Tulio Abate has had a problem pulling off to the inside. Back to our leaders, by a high performance with their navigator looking behind to see the position of the other teams. They've got to watch out for Conum. You see the hand signals lining up as they cross the start finish line. Baia High Performance takes the win. Second place going to Conum Yachts. Let's take a look at the results for the Saturday race here at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. First place going to Baia High Performance. Second place to Conum Yachts. Third place goes to Big Sergio. Fourth place to the wild card Redline Conrad. And fifth place goes to Spirit of Portomasso. A big crowd to see Bayer awarded their medals, but it was to be a short-lived celebration. Unfortunately, the Italians' joy wouldn't last long. Their onboard data recorder showed that they'd exceeded the 85 mile hour speed limit that set on the open top supersports boats for safety reasons, and they were given a six-minute penalty, which dropped them back to fifth place. Join us after the break, when it's the turn of the Evolution boats to hit the waters off of Vigo. Welcome back to the Atlantic coast of Spain, where the harbour front crowd has just been treated to a thrilling Powerboat P1 super sports race and now await the first Evolution class race of the weekend. Chris Shaw checks out the form book after yesterday's power pole. Honeyparty.com had to miss the second race in Tunisia after a crack appeared in the deck, but they're back in one piece again now. Well, we've structurally reinforced the whole deck right the way through the boat now, so we're fairly confident structurally uh, we're not going to have any problems. There's a crew change in Keaton Alta Limits with the return of Giovanni Carpitella, who raced in P1 last year with Giancarlo Cangiano, and he replaces Joe Scro. Giancarlo called me 15 days ago when I'm in Patagonia for ski and said, Giovanni, quickly, please, coming back, we have to go to race, we have to try to win the, the World Championship. I said, OK, then, Carlo, give me, what, three, four days for organized to travel, and they're coming back. In a spectacular setting, Powerpole saw four boats under three minutes, ten seconds. Honeyparty.com came fourth, Keaton Outer Limits were third fastest, and very close to the time set by the Fantastic One, which again is crewed by Luca Famili Fendi and Matteo Nicolini. 
but by far the fastest was Fountain Worldwide first for boats, lapping at three minutes, two seconds. We thought it was going to be a lot closer than it was, so it was quite a risky lap, not the type of lap we can do for 12 laps today. As the boats head out towards the start line for round nine of the Powerboat P1 Evolution Class World Championship, it's time for us to join our race commentator, Martin Sanborn. Thank you, Tiff, and let's take a look at the Evolution course here, the sprint race here at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. 5.67 miles on the lap. They are going to do nine laps plus the start lap, seven turns, including one left-hander on this race course. The boats are all lined up based on their power pole. This time we have a change on the inside, the fastest boat in the power pole, found worldwide first for boats.com. They've got the inside, and we have a green flag. The boats are off and running. Looks like Pignolo got a big jump on the outside, Maybe a little bit too much of a jump, but off to an early lead is the fantastic one. That was on board, found worldwide first for boats as we see the boats making their way to the first turn. The fantastic one out in the lead. Keeps on outer limits almost side by side with Fountain Worldwide. But the fantastic one has a big jump running very well as they move out into the lead, heading towards the first turn. That's Pignolo on the outside. They were a little bit behind because of the angle. The leader is the fantastic one. Second place now, found worldwide first for boats. Second place, Keaton Outer Limits. Found worldwide has the inside lane. The fantastic one has the boat speed. As we go on board Pignolo, and here comes HoneyParty.com. Look at them moving through the pack. They are now charging up alongside Keaton Outer Limits. They are almost four across as they head to the first turn. The fantastic one, found worldwide first for boats, Keaton Outer Limits and coming up hard on the outside, HoneyParty.com. Making a big move to the outside as they get past Keaton Outer Limits. Honey Party coming up hard on the outside. They are now alongside the fantastic one challenging for the lead. Honey Party's got the outside line. The Fantastic One has the inside line. They got the better lane. They got a less distance to go around the race course, but Honey Party carrying the boat speed on the outside. Richard Carr and Mark Pascal as they make their way around the outside. Found Worldwide first for boats on the inside. Oh, they hook it a little bit. Got caught in the rooster tail of the Fantastic One. That cost them some distance. Coming around on the outside is HoneyParty.com. That was on board Keaton Outer Limits as we go back to our battle for the lead. On the outside, honeyparty.com. On the inside is the Fantastic One. Skater versus Cigarette. Chief Power versus Mercury Power on the inside. The honeyparty.com boat goes wide on the outside. The next two boats to come through, that was Keaton Outer Limits and Fountain Worldwide battling for third and fourth position. And there we see the honeyparty.com boat pull past the fantastic one. They are now the leaders. Honeyparty.com, all that speed. A very fast boat as they move their way into the lead ahead of the fantastic one. Let's look at our virtual spectator replay as we watch on the outside of the screen. Honeyparty.com challenging the fantastic one on the inside as they pull ahead into the lead. What a great battle. As we look at the race from overhead, the next boat to go through the turn is gonna be Fountain Worldwide first for boats, followed by Keaton Outer Limits as we go on board Fountain Worldwide. They did not give Keaton a lot of room, but they are now challenging the fantastic one. Fountain Worldwide coming up hard on the inside. That is an Ilmore powered, naturally aspirated boat coming up against the supercharged Mercury powered boat. As they go back through the rooster tail to the outside and they get by. We've got a problem with the fantastic one. They've come off plane to the inside having a problem. On board Lucas Oil, I don't know what happened to the fantastic one. They slowed down dramatically moving to the inside of the race course. That is going to put Fountain Worldwide first for boats in second place. And the fantastic one has got back up and running again. Whatever the problem was, they got it corrected. They're back up and running in third position. They managed to hold off fourth place, Keaton Outer Limits. Honeyparty.com well out in the lead right now. And the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. 
Not a hiccup from those chief engines as they make their way around the course. Big advantage to having all that clean water. You can let the boat a little bit more conservative on the trim, carry all kinds of speed. You don't got to worry about traffic. On board Fountain Worldwide, first for boats. Back to our battle right now as Lucas Oil gets ready to put a move on Keaton Outer Limits. Keaton Outer Limits having a problem. Lucas Oil gets by. Looks like Lucas Oil is going to move into fourth position. But the boat of the day is HoneyParty.com well out in the lead right now. Surface drives on this skater. This boat is an identical boat to the Lucas Oil and Pinolo boat as they make their way around the the east end of the race course right now. Lucas Oil on the inside. Pinolo on the outside. Oh, and here we have a problem with Keaton Outer Limits. As Giancarlo pulling the throttles back. Keaton Outer Limits has a problem. And they come to rest within the spectator fleet. Back to our leader, HoneyParty.com, well out in front right now. They have got to be thrilled with the ride they're getting. Oh, Keaton Outer Limits has solved their problem. They're back up and running. Let's see if they can make up some ground. They've got to keep in the hunt. Those guys are currently in second place in the overall points chase. Lucas Oil right now ahead of Pinolo 53. Let's take a look at our virtual spectator with Lucas Oil and Pinolo 53. Followed by Keaton Outer Limits. Keaton Outer Limits has got themselves back up and running, but they lost a lot of positions as they now come off playing to the inside, as you can see on our virtual spectator. And it looks like the Fantastic One again having a problem. Reoccurring problem for the Fantastic One. Mercury powered cigarette. Pinolo 53 running just to the outside of the wake. He's going to the inside. He goes right through the rooster tail. That cost him some ground. He lost his vision, slowed down a little bit. He's still right on the outside of the wake. Pinolo 53. Back to our leader, honeyparty.com. Well out in the lead, second place. Fountain Worldwide first for boats. They are the current points leaders. Looking back at GFN, G Bellato, they are way off the pace from where they normally run with this boat. Running at the back of the pack right now, GFN, G Bellato, a diesel powered Meta Marine. As we go back to Lucas Oil with Nigel Hook and Shelly Jory. Now let's go on board with Centauri and Yachts. You can see that they are about to reel in Lucas Oil on the left side of your screen. It's a little bumpier than it actually looks from the outside as we see Centauri and Yachts powered by Lucas Oil. They're moving up a position. Lucas Oil drops off to Centauri and Yachts. As we look at the fantastic one, it's back up and running. Whatever their problem is, it's intermittent. And Honey Party puts them down a lap. Honey Party is running so well, they've now put down a lap over the top of the Fantastic One. We look on board Lucas Oil, and it looks like they're slowing down, having a problem. Lucas Oil now having a problem, coming off plane, and there goes Pinolo 53 to get by. You hear the alarms going off on board Lucas Oil. Here comes GFN Giabolato to also get past. Centurion Yachts back up on the pace, moving their way through the pack. They are definitely benefiting from some of the mechanical problems as we see Nigel Hook. Here is our second place boat, Fountain Worldwide, first for boats.com. It doesn't look like they have any hope of catching a leader, honeyparty.com. Well out in the lead is HoneyParty.com, now gets by Lucas Oil again. HoneyParty.com coming around. This should be the checkered flag to take their first win of the season in Powerboat P1, and they're going to do it at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. 
HoneyParty.com takes the win here in Vigo. Second place goes to Fountain Worldwide, first for Boats.com. Third place goes to Centurion Yachts after they move their way through the pack to capture third place. Fourth place goes to Pignolo 53, and fifth place goes to GFN Giabalato. After so many strong performances where they failed to finish, Richard Carr and Mark Pasco finally get to the top step of the podium, while second-placed Fountain Worldwide had their attention on the point scores. Uh, I was quite emotional actually when it happened. Um, when we got to the penultimate lap, I thought of uh, "Oh God, is it, is it going to do it? Is it going to do it?" And then we're on the last lap. I was just, uh, just, just, just be careful, and uh, we got there. Uh, we're looking at the big picture. We want the world championship, um, and that's what we did. Really happy with second place. I uh, can't believe I'm happy with second place, but uh, it's a, it's one big step towards the world championship. A very exciting opening day's racing at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea, and day two looks to be just as spectacular. Welcome back to Vigo in the northwest corner of Spain, where, well away from the hustle and bustle of the thriving seafront, you can discover 500 years of history in these old streets of the Casco Viejo, the old part of the town. Although there was a small Roman settlement here and Vikings made the odd foray onto the land, the history of Vigo really started in the 15th century. And as the port grew, it was inevitable that it would come under attack from other sailing nations. Francis Drake occupied the town for a short period and the Turks tried to invade but failed before the French moved in for a while. Meanwhile, back down in the mouth of the Ria de Vigo, the Powerboat P1 competitors are preparing for their second race of the weekend. It's the Supersports first, where Conan Yachts have all but wrapped up the title with three races still to go. Going into the second round of the Supersport race in Vigo, Conan Yachts are seemingly about to secure their second World Championship as long as they finish in the points. As it stands now, Angelo and Aaron need 10 more points from this next race and it's all theirs. Otherwise, it's going to be decided at the last round. Phoenix 8 retired early in the first race with a broken exhaust that's now been repaired. And Bootsy Bullet didn't even make it to the start having blown a turbo, but they're fixed and ready to go. Whilst the title might be all but decided in Conan Yacht's favour with three races still to go, fight for the honour of the runners-up spot is still very much on as the Super Sports boats head out to the start line and we rejoin our race commentator, Martin Sambor. Thank you, Tiff. Let's take a look at the endurance course here for the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. This time we move out to Playa de Samil. Nine turns on a 6.42 nautical mile race course. They're going to run 11 laps plus the start in a clockwise rotation. As we go on board Silverline, Bootsy Bullets, the boats are lining up based on their power pole finish results. Fastest boat was Conum Yachts, followed by Redline, Tulio Abate, 
Big Sergio and Spirit of Port Tommaso as the boats line up and we have a green flag on the inside off to an early jump, Conum Yachts. Essentially, they have mathematically clinched the championship here in P1. As we look on board Michael Link, they are definitely in contention for the coveted second position right now. As Tiff said, it's all but decided for the front point, but everybody's going to be battling for the runner-up spot. As we see Silverline, Bootsy Bullet, driving past by a high performance to move into second place. As they all make their way towards the turn, the leader, Conum Yachts, second place is going to be Silverline, Bootsy Bullet. Third place is by a high performance. That's where Conum Yachts is used to being, out in the lead with the clean water as they look behind to check and see where their competition is. And Angelo and Aaron are the first boats to the turn. Silverline, Bootsy Bullet in second place right on their heels. By a high performance on the inside of them as we go back to our leaders, Conum Yachts. Unusually calm here for the beach side at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. On board Microlink, as they try to run down the leaders, Conum Yachts out in front. Second place, Silverline Bootsy Bullet. Here we go to Spirit of Port Tommaso. Running a little off the pace today compared to what they did in the sprint race. Here is by a high performance. These guys definitely want to demonstrate that the penalty was a fluke and they have the boat speed. Here is Al and Al in the big Sergio. This is Conrad Propulsion Systems Red Line, a brand new entry in a velocity powerboat. This UK-based team, oh, gets a little bit loose. Almost got himself to the inside of the turn, but corrected it and got around it. Back to our leaders, Conum Yachts. Looking like they're just out for a Sunday drive. Calm waters, perfect boat attitude. By a high performance. Looking over their shoulder. Silverline Bootsy Bullet trying to run him down. By a high performance has gotten past Silverline Bootsy Bullet to move into second position. There you see Silverline Bootsy Bullet just off the hip of by a high performance. Now moving into second place. As we go back to Voom Voom Hustler, Microlink PC. Talking about that they can feel something coming through the wheel. Silverline Bootsy Bullet currently running now in third position behind this boat by a high performance. That is a 38-foot Donzi with Mercury Power. Again, this boat has been tough all year long, having captured all the points they need to call themselves world champions with one more event to go yet in Portugal. But it looks like they have wrapped up the championship here at the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. As they come across the start finish line, hands raised, they know they have captured another win and another championship here for the Vigo Grand Prix of the Sea. On the podium, both days, they are gonna walk away with first place overall here in Vigo. Angelo Tedeschi and Aaron Cantar, congratulations on your win in Vigo. Let's take a look at our results. Conum Yachts takes the win by a high performance, takes second place. Silverline Bootsy Bullet in third, Microlink in fourth place, and Spirit of Port Tommaso in fifth. With two races still to go, it's a done deal now for the Super Sports World Championship. Angelo Tedeschi gets his second, while Aaron Chianta gets his very first World Championship. Tiff, uh, Aaron drives the boat like you drive the car. He's a fantastic driver, and together we are very, very strong.
And Aaron, is your father here today? He must be very proud. He builds the boats and you win the world championship. Yeah, it's, uh, my, it's here, my father, for, for, for our company, it's a big uh, success because we uh, win the championship two times. And uh, I like to say this is uh, the first time in Powerboat P1 in Super Sport Class, uh, same boat, win the championship two times. A tremendous achievement for Konim Yachts and for the others, there are still two more races left to secure the best possible points finish, so there'll be plenty of action in Portimao. Welcome back to Vigo in Spain for the final race in what's been a great weekend of offshore power boating action. It's round 10 of the Evolution Class Power Boat P1 World Championship next, where Fountain Worldwide are looking to close in on their second consecutive title. Chris Shaw brings us up to date with the points as they stand. Fountain Worldwide lead by 280 points. To cover all possible scenarios, they need 40 points from the next race to become the 2008 champions. Both Keep Now to Limits and the Fantastic One had problems in the first of the Evolution races, but it turned out to be the same problem for both boats. We had uh, some water in the fuel, in the tank, and then after one lap, we had some problems, and uh, we found in the, in the filter, so we found water. Uh, unfortunately, we lose the possibility to catch the championship. Now we uh, fight for second. For Lucas Orr, it was a much more different problem that stopped them mid-race. You know, it turned out to be very simple. It's just an electrical problem, two wires that were rubbing against each other. Uh, they were causing an intermittent break in the engine speed uh, from time to time the last couple laps. The boats are going out, so we better join our race commentator, Martin Sambor. Thank you, Tiff, and this time the boats are heading out to the beach of Playa de Samil. As they have to head out to the harbor, we go on board honeyparty.com as they get up on plane. Let's take a look at the race course here for the endurance race at the Grand Prix of the Sea in Vigo. They're gonna run on a 6.42 mile lap. They're gonna run 12 laps plus the start lap, clockwise direction, nine turns, including one left-hander on the big course out here in the ocean. Now it is definitely a lot more calm than we expected. It's a little bumpier than it was for the super sport race as the boats line up for the start. On the inside, the pole setter, Fountain Worldwide first for both. Second one is the fantastic one. But way on the outside, Pinolo 53 is way out in front as the green flag drops. The top three boats on the inside, Keaton Outer Limits. The fantastic one and Fountain Worldwide first for boats jump to the start. And firstforboats.com is running second place right now to the Fantastic One. Fantastic One got a great jump. They're now ahead and control the lane of James Shepard and Craig Wilson on the inside as the entire fleet makes their way to the first turn. Coming up hard through the middle, honeyparty.com trying to pick up where they left off in yesterday's race. Honeyparty.com making their way through, trying to move themselves into position for the first turn. Out in front, the fantastic one. 
Bound Worldwide first for boats. Keaton Outer Limits, Honey Party, and Pinolo 53 as they all make their way to the first turn and moving out into the lead is Keaton Outer Limits side by side with Fountain Worldwide first for boats.com, but on the inside is the Fantastic One. As the boats leg it out, it looks like Fountain Worldwide first for boats has got a little bit of speed as they move out into the lead. As they go through the first turn, Fountain Worldwide first for boats squares the turn off beautifully. They move out into the lead. Keaton was going to go white. As the lead four boats make their way towards the next turn, the leader, Fountain Worldwide first for boats. On the extreme inside is Keaton Outer Limits, followed by the Fantastic One and Honey Party. Fountain Worldwide makes their way through the turn. Keaton Outer Limits on the inside. Oh, they get so close to the Fantastic One, they almost hit him. Push the Fantastic One out to the outside. Keaton Outer Limits on the inside. Keaton Outer Limits holds on to second place. The Fantastic One in third place as they make their way around the spectators at the beach. But here comes HoneyParty.com coming on hard on the outside. This boat loves the outside lane. On board Pinolo 53, you can see off to the right as they're just getting overtaken by the big Meta Marina GFN Giabolato. Back out to the lead. Found Worldwide first for boats has opened up a big margin right now. Keaton Outer Limits in second place and third place is HoneyParty.com. GFN Giabolato is opening up a little bit bigger margin right now on Pinolo 53. The boat definitely running better than it did in the sprint race. Honeyparty.com currently running in third place, trying to get alongside Keaton Outer Limits. But well out in the lead, running very well. Found worldwide first for Boats.com, James Shepard and Craig Wilson in their Ilmore powered 42 Fountain. Well out in the lead, second boat through is the Outer Limits, Mercury powered. Looks like they've slowed down, what happened? They lost a little bit of a bump. Next boat to come across is gonna be honeyparty.com as they're swinging to the outside and we go on board. Lucas Oil, this is a Mercury powered skater making their way around the race course. They are currently in fifth position. Keaton Outer Limits running in second place. Mercury powered Outer Limits trying to run down the leaders. Fountain Worldwide first for boats. Currently running in third place, trying to make up the same position they did yesterday, winning the sprint race. That is honeyparty.com. Here's Cranefield's wine. Whoa, getting a little bit loose, making their way around the race course. 